Okay, now we're going to be looking at the control sidebar and we're going to focus on enhancements first. So in order to enable this, you click on this here and the first thing you'll notice is output resolution. This is going to show your original resolution and if you want to export the original size, that's fine. Um, you also have all these different options. For custom resolution, you could always prioritize with width, you could prioritize by height, and you could prioritize by scale. If you have a resolution that is not a common resolution and you don't want to avoid the black bars either from the top or on the sides, you could lock the aspect ratio that's coming in and then prioritize by scale. And then you could always maneuver with the numbers to see if it's reaching the width or height you'd like. The other easy way to do that is if you already know what width you want or height, you could just type that in. I'm just going to put it on 3200. That'll set this up. So I know that's going to be a percent of 166. And then I just jump to scale and that'll remove all the black bars. So that's custom resolution. One other thing to note is I am currently using the default codec setting of H.264. If for my output resolution, here's my original, if I wanted to do four times upscale, I would not be able to render or preview anything. Let's just try it right now just to show you. And I got an error. You see it says failed preview error. It also has this pink mark here, C error. You can click it here and I'll tell you what the error is. Oh, there's a max size. There's the problem. And that's really easy. There's a limitation to this codec. And the nice thing is you jump to codec, it'll tell you right here. So I would need to go to H265 and that would be perfectly fine because there's a max of 8K for H265. Um, let's go back H264. I'm going to switch this back to original for our testing purposes. All right, for video type, we have three different options. We have progressive, interlaced, and interlaced progressive. When you first start out, you'll see this, what we call a carousel that shows the different models. And it gives you an idea of what each of these specialize with. So it'll give you an idea if you're doing four times upscaling, Artemis, Denoise, and Sharpen. This one's great for animation and CG and things like that. So it'll give you a small descriptor of what each of the models specialize in. Do note that each shot and each video is unique based on the quality, the source, which was it VHSC, was it mini DV, is it from a cell phone? You may realize that something that such as Nix, which is great for denoising, is actually really good for VHSC, uh, Super 8 and Hi8 types of uh, media. Please note every piece of footage is unique and we encourage experimentation with different models and parameters as part of the creative process. If you're not that interested in the carousel and you just want to see the text, you could just click on this button here and it'll show all the different models that are available and it has the same descriptor. Uh, but if you prefer to see visual representation, that's what this is for. So this is the carousel and here is the list. For the three video types, if you're using more modern um, devices such as cell phones, um, video cameras, or anything like that that's been made within the last few years, you will most likely be using progressive. This enhances and upscales without having to, to deinterlace. For video type interlace, your video will have something called fields. For example, let me bring in a source that has just that. Okay. So these lines going across are called fields. Essentially, every other field of data captures one of two different moments in time. So you will need to do what is called deinterlacing the footage. We'll show you here. Interlace. That's what most of these do is they deinterlace. So this is a very basic one. Just show you example of what it does. Okay. So we have a spider with uh, what looks like a meal. Normally I leave field order alone because it does a really good job detecting which order of fields to put above or below. Otherwise you can choose top field or bottom field and you could always apply grain to any of these. 
Interlace Progressive is very similar to Interlace. The only difference is, is say your footage was captured and then rendered out with the fields baked in. These tools are a little bit more robust or a little bit more uh, aggressive in how it treats the deinterlacing to be able to handle the extra compression that comes with a baked in export of the fields. All right, for our examples, we're going to focus on progressive as these are the most common videos you'll be working with. So I'm going to go back to our other stores.